We are seeing growing calls for a special prosecutor for the Russia investigation, but it doesn't seem that's likely to happen, at least at this point, because the same guy who recommended firing Comey is the one who would appoint a special prosecutor. That would be Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Now, since Attorney General Jeff Sessions has recused himself, at least in name only, from the Russia probe, his number two will be the one making said call. But Congress could still do something if they have the spine. And Senator John McCain, he'd like for that to happen. The Arizona Republican, and many Republicans, by the way, have given hints that they'd have a support for such a proposition, issued the following statement. I have long called for a special congressional committee to investigate Russia's interference in the 2016 election. The president's decision to remove the FBI director only confirms the need and the urgency of such a committee. Republican Congressman Justin Amash of, Wash of Michigan State excuse me, says that he's also leaning towards an independent commission to investigate Russian meddling. And to add another layer to this, multiple reports saying a federal grand jury has issued subpoenas. They are seeking business records from associates of fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn as part of the ongoing probe. And uh, who else but uh, three friends of mine here can answer some of these legal questions um, that we're looking at. Uh, how all of this could work here, Jim Casoris, criminal defense attorney in Manhattan, sitting on the board of directors of the New York City Criminal Bar Association, frequently lecturing at New York Law School, the bar associations in both Queens and New York, a former prosecutor himself, Doug Von Oist, also former prosecutor, founding partner of Carson Von Oist, focusing on corporate misconduct, and also selected by the Legal 500 as one of the more, most influential trial lawyers in the nation. Mark Furnish, back from a break as well, adjunct professor at the Elizabeth Haub School of Law at Pace University. He's argued before the U.S. Supreme Court. All right, let's get into, if not remedy, the who could do the what. Um, special prosecutor unlikely for all the political reasons we've said. Pressures could be ramped up. And if you guys want to use in Watergate how certain things worked, especially after Archibald Cox, feel free here. But the second part is, if it's not an independent prosecutor, an independent commission, would they, in effect, have the same powers, Jimmy? No. If, uh, I, I, what needs to happen here is, I believe very strongly, that you need a special prosecutor that not only has subpoena power, but the power to prosecute. So what's being tossed around is a congressional committee. A congressional committee, an investigative committee, can investigate and investigate and investigate, but where do they go with it? They well, would have the DOJ, presumably. Right, they'd have to go to the DOJ, the FBI, the, and now we're back at that same right, right at that exactly. same point where the director of the FBI, who's leading the investigation and has the power to prosecute, is gone. Is his replacement going to then follow the instructions well, to prosecute? From a practical level, one man comes out, another person comes in. Obviously, this is a confirmable position here. You would hope that no hack's going to come in. I've heard names like Rudy Giuliani or Chris Christie. In a million years, they couldn't get confirmed here. But somebody else could. Mark, changing the nameplate on the director of the FBI, could that person, in effect, if not quash an investigation, certainly change the course or the tone of it? Well, I think there's a lot of conflation going on between investigation on the one hand and prosecution on the other. And part of that conflation has occurred because Comey took such a public role in announcing that charges were not going to be filed, whereas that is typically the prosecutor's job, who at that time was Loretta Lynch. So we have to distinguish what we're talking about here. Theoretically, a congressional committee could perform the investigation, turn its findings over to the DOJ for a potential decision as to whether or not to prosecute. Now that decision would fall to Rosenstein in the first instance, and by all accounts, he enjoys wide bipartisan support. He was the U.S. attorney in the District of Maryland, and he's a prosecutor's prosecutor. I will I, say, though, whatever support that he may have enjoyed on a bipartisan level, Democrats and Republicans were very critical about Some a letter he wrote. No, no. So several Republicans, specifically because in all of two weeks on the job, before there could ever be possible due diligence, and a timeline that's already been contradicted, and with who was doing the issuance and who gave the directive, that certainly here's, hasn't here's engendered what, himself he, that he'd be a fair here's arbiter. Here's what they're critical of with respect to Rosenstein. 
I don't think anybody takes issue with the content of the letter. They think the letter may be a pretext for some up something else. That's what they're taking issue with. Now, I have no doubt that if Rosenstein thought that his impartiality might reasonably or objectively be questioned if somebody else did the investigation, that he would turn it over to a special prosecutor. I have no problem with that, but I don't think we should be impugning uh, this man who has an uh, impeccable uh, reputation. Uh, uh, well, I would, we I would only say, and I don't want to so much get into the partisanships of it, right. but I would say he certainly did not do a himself any favors with an intro introduction as to what he said right now. now well, Doug, wait a second. You've he hold he on made a recommendation, I, I, Mark, but, have, but Trump didn't have to necessarily take that recommendation. Okay, but in the letter itself right. here, the rationale for why and when, um, for me at least, is beyond credulity. But, okay, you've worked with the FBI you think that and different Comey things. Just it you've worked with. I had many issues with Jim Comey. That's what he I said never in the called for his termination. The timing of it is beyond bizarre, and anyone with a scintilla of a BS detector says, give me a break. Well, I but don't Doug, think that the timing is not Rosenstein, though. That's Trump. Okay. Now, FBI. Mm -hmm. To me, and I think to most, the House and the Senate, sure, they can have uh, their competing investigations right now, but they neither have the expertise, the resources, and they struggle with the polarization of partisanship that always grips Washington. The FBI was seen as the fair arbiter. Now, you've worked with the FBI over the years here, et cetera. Everyone I know who deals with them says, you're not going to find a better group. They're not in it for the money. They're not in it often for the glory here that they believe in the fairness and the rule of law and upholding it and well, against any enemies, domestic or foreign. With okay, that but I'm talking to Doug at the moment, Mark, right? Them. My yeah. point <laughs> is, should the public have confidence that somebody else comes in as a director and the investigation goes on as if nothing changed, or should we be nervous? Well, that's what this whole exercise is about. Should the public have confidence in what's going on? And you, you, you just had a discussion about one person. This whole process is so abnormal that it's, it's going to ultimately, just what has happened so far is going to undermine the process in general. This has never happened before. Well, it happened once in 1993, but this doesn't happen. So if you're t talking about confidence, regardless of who they appoint now, there's going to be a diminished confidence in the process sure. and the FBI's office just because of what's happened. And in the end, maybe it's fine. Maybe what happened was great. Maybe politically it all works, but there's already been damage done. Especially mm. depending on who is appointed, because let's not let's be clear. Yeah. The person that comes in does have the power. A and to if direct anyone believes that you're going to find a Louis Free or even a Jim Comey, whatever issues you have, oh, somebody come that's on, seen let's this not straight celebrate arrow here. Jim Comey. Okay, People right. have been blasting this next. guy for the past. Comey's year. gone, but the FBI right, is gone. still on the case. Will his firing have a chilling effect into the probe of meddling into our election? We'll continue this conversation after this.